definitely has. But the transition, there's no secession planning in Zimbabwe. There's no secession planning in a lot of these countries. And so we have people that, that are just there and they've learned the European ways of doing things and they're holding on to the resources. That's not our way. That has never been our way. I am because we are and because we are, therefore I am, is way different than I think, therefore I am. That's the European way of thinking. If I thought it, it must be the case. That's arrogance. Whether, you know, as it relates to um, the way that we relate to each other, but if we say I am, you know, because you are, then I recognize that I only have meaning in the context of the larger community. And so we have to really just go there with that mindset as opposed to going there with the mindset of I'm taking something to you. Because that's, you know, read Pedagogy of the Oppressed, you know, where it talks about the education system and how we, the teacher has all the information he gets to, no, that's not a real education system. The real education system, the classical education system in Kemet, Nubia, and Kush, was one that was circular, where we all sat around and we got from each other. It wasn't one person sitting up here preaching to you all, because we, we've been exchanging energy this whole time. Right? So we got to continue, continue exchanging that energy. I think, I think what I was getting at was, though, I don't want to go there and feel like I'm just here to set myself up. Oh, we're and just to, You know what I mean? I want to, you know, and there's people around me that need, may need something. I you know. It's like a sharing. No, I agree. I agree. And uh, the comment that I wanted to make clear is that the biggest thing you can take over there is you. You know, to go and let the country speak to you, to go and let the people vibrate with you, and you would get more answers than you know. We have uh, the sister here has a wealth of resources. We have a wealth of resources right here with Bomani. And there's a wealth of resources here, but the true experience of knowing what they need and how to do it will come from you going. You know, your presence is the first thing you need to do because the vibration of the land, the vibration of the people, and those needs will vibrate with you and it will direct you in how and what you need to do. Let the land, let the community, let the people vibrate with you and you will feel something and you will have more answers than you thought you needed. I would like to touch on that. Then, Ms. Baba has had a question for a moment that I'm coming back here. I'm going to come here. I'm going to go there. Hold me accountable. I've done my pointing. Um, but um, to, to touch on what one of the things that I think maybe perhaps you brought up was around governance. And I think the same thing happens even within our communities that are here. Um, if you do not have a, a place set up for your elders to transition to, it makes it more difficult for me to release and let go because I'm also worried about my how I'm going to be sustained because we do we still are not operating in the sense of, oh, I'm the elder, I'll take care of the children, then you go off and you continue to bring in the money. You know, there's there's a certain type of exchange. The same way if you're holding office, you know, you know he's, he's not going. He's also burned a lot of bridges. And he's fearful of when I let this go. He said he was going to step down. He decided he was not going to step down. He started considering, I haven't done right by the rest of the people. I don't have a healthy transition plan. I don't know what it is I'm going to do. And I haven't trained up the next leadership, which brings me to, if you know an elder that can pass down that wisdom, don't allow them to make that transition without having uh, passed that forward to you continue on that work, which is, which is one of the things that I also think that they should be doing is priming, if they're doing the right thing, priming the next generation to continue the good work. Um, and as far as what you can do, um, there are so many skills that I think that we have not uncovered. First, uh, even recognizing how many skills we actually possess that comes into self-love, that comes into understanding who you are, and the amount of skills that we even possess. I went initially thinking, I'm coming to learn from you. I want to sit at the elders' feet. I want to learn. What can I do? You know, give it to me. And they were saying, you know how to you know how to do this. You know how to access this program. You can help me set this up. You can go back overseas and help facilitate trade so you can help me to make a little bit more money. When you come back, maybe you can employ some youth and teach them the things that you know around it so they can have a head start. And so there's so many things you can 
you can do, but I do I agree with everything that they've said around going, being, learning from the people and understanding how you can best be an asset and how they can also be an asset to you because poor is also a state of mind. They are very much so rich. I have felt so enriched by the things that they've given to me and understanding they didn't have the finances to take care of me but still brought me in their home and gave me so much more than what I could have ever given them financially. So I think it's going to be a very equal exchange if not uh, overbalanced on me. Continue going and stay. Um, Okay, well, hold me accountable. Here. Okay, I uh, have been involved in community outreach for decades. And uh, I can remember what the shrine was doing back in the 70s when I got to Atlanta. I can remember what I was doing in the 60s. And it's about what, as a people, we need to do how we look at the necessities of life, how we segment responsibility, and how we prepare. Uh, the Shrine used to have uh, a program called the Black Slate. And the Black Slate used to be voter education. And they would have a list of who we should vote for and why. But the fact of the matter is now, our short-term memory has got us so emotionally tied into the old battle between separation and integration that we don't want to have no parts of anything that had accomplishments connected to it. We have to realize that we can do more than one thing at a time. We have to multitask in levels that relate to our necessities of life. We have social necessities and responsibilities, which means we have to get along with one another. We have to get along with our, our, our elders and our children, and we have to do so in a cohesive way that allows everybody to flow coherently. In other words, move with an order that doesn't create chaos. Now we also have an economic necessity because we have to exchange in order to receive. And in order to have that, everybody needs to be on the same page when it comes to what is valuable and what is not valuable. And it's not about our emotional connection with desire and with pleasure and with pain and all of that because none of it is meant to be fun. It's just necessary. Then we have this political stuff. We said, oh, I don't want nobody to give us nothing. He said, oh, I want the philanthropist. Look, our tax money is going out the window, and we're ready to abandon it because we're so full of pain and anger. The fact of the matter is, if we're looking at the governance and the responsibility to deal with it, we don't need to send a leader to the political party. We need to totally populate the political party, and then we become the ones who choose who runs in the primaries, and the one who wins the primaries win because we populated the party, and because we became the party, and because being the party got our candidates in office. And because we as a group, rather than them or he or she as a leader representing the group, amongst a collective of more than that one, the unity factor means that the responsibility to that group creates a need to adhere to what our expectations of that primary winner is. Because they know the next time the primary comes up, because we hold the majority of the votes in a particular voting precinct, then we control it. And then that power is what the whole civil rights movement was about. But all we said is, oh, we, we, we were just marching. And marching was something to be seen. It was a glamour thing. No, it wasn't a glamour thing. 
It was pain. It was degradation. But there was already pain and degradation. So which was worse? The pain and degradation you acquiesced to or the pain and degradation you resisted? And the accomplishments as a result of that resistance. <laughs> Ashe, Baba, are you going to revive that? What did you call it? The black scroll? The black scroll. The black slate. Well, I'm not a member of this right now. <laughs> so, and the reason why it stopped, I mean, like, I'm, I'm very conscientious of what happened, but I don't want to hog up all the time because we, we haven't had any breaks and other people have things to say. We need to incorporate everyone in their development. And if everybody's just listening to one person, they're not taking the time to be creative thinkers, constructive thinkers, and critical thinkers. Because that's what we need to do. We need to think as much as we need to feel. We can feel success, but we got to think the strategy in order to achieve it. Give thanks. Give thanks. We are, we're going to take two more questions. Um, I had the sister in the back, and then here, simply because neither one of them have gotten a chance to ask a question yet. We can respect that, I'm not skipping. Um, but I'm going to have both of them ask their questions. I didn't know if you had any comments up here before we moved on to the next question. Well, I just want to say quickly, um, um, as a member of the Shrine, um, I joined well after the 70s. Um, but um, I, I will say that a lot of times when we're thinking about movements and, and making changes, um, we, we get frustrated because everybody's not on board. Um, everyone will never be on board. Um, it never has been a situation where the majority of people um, got on board. It's always been a small group of committed people that have made the change. Uh, but I think that for me, um, for me, one of the reasons why I joined the Shrine and I, and I encourage people to join organizations is that the Shrine has infrastructure. So organizations that I used to organize with, we, we were finding, had to find different places to meet. Um, and, um, and I didn't go to church for a very, very long time. But um, when I came here and I heard about like land ownership and you know owning the whole block and owning, so I said that's real power right there. So for me, like you know. When we talk about things that are here or things that are not here, things that used to be here, um, let us also be conscious. I think even members of the tribe sometimes, we, we sometimes are down on ourselves for things that that used to happen and are not currently happening, but the, but the real power is here. It's in the people, it's in the infrastructure. You know, the fact that we have consistent places and when the people are ready to move, they have a place that they can congregate. So that's real power to me. Um, Shrine isn't the only place that has that, but it is a place that I found that has it. So um, be conscious of, of those things and make sure that the people that you're organizing with, y'all are starting to build, you know, infrastructure. Y'all have land, pyramids, y'all have things, you know, so that when people are ready to move, when people get frustrated, when, when another brother is killed or sister is killed by the police, the fact that they don't, that there is a repository for a place they can put their anger and organize, we can't take that for granted, right? And we can't blame people for going and marching in the streets and doing different things that we say that they shouldn't do, but we haven't done the job to make sure that they have a place to go when they feel that anger. Well said. We're going to move to our last two questions. I have been researching leaving the United States for about five years and uh, had anticipated making my exit in 16, but some family matters are keeping me here through June at least. So June is when I plan to make my departure. Um, I've looked at a few places, but am uh, certainly partial to Africa. And of all the things I've learned, what seems to be resounding from country to country is security. Can you speak to that, please? Mm. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can, I can. Go ahead, go ahead. I can give a quick answer to that. As far as um, myself, um, I've been traveling African continent for uh, 12 years, and it's 
it's been little to no issues as far as safety moving around and people that I know that live there they they don't report and tell me that they have issues with uh, security. You do have basic things where you know where some of the same things that happen here where you have an unsecure home and people you know, break it and take things. Uh, but as far as our safety and moving around and things like that, it's a complete safe environment. And then the more we connect with our own people there, they can teach us the ropes of how to understand the system of culture, of how things, how to keep out of certain things. And just like those of us that are here, there's certain parts of town that we don't go and do certain things. Yeah. So we just always want to make sure that you have a good house and you're safe. Yes, and, and I think it is different for men and for women, um, things to consider. Um, so yeah, definitely, you know, as, as Brother said, make sure that you are uh, going with someone who has your safety as a, as a concern or you're involved in a community. Um, there's, there's definitely places that you can, you can go where you're not going to have to worry about any issues. So I would start in an area that is uh, the highest. Area. So, uh, so I just got back from South Africa yesterday. If you're in Johannesburg, you might as well be in Chicago. Right. Right. I mean, well, I mean, it's, it's very, you know. Well, I should have said Chicago. It's, I mean, it, it, was, it, was like, it was like a New York for me. It was like New York. Yeah, and, I mean, it was like New York and Joe Berg for me. And yeah. it was like at night they said, don't stop at any other lights. Just drive through. Well, that, that's but, right. but, yeah, but, 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 but I mean, it's still, it's still yeah. very much so developed. I, I can speak from the perspective of um, a female without a compliment. Um, I, I have to check my ambitions at times. And I had one moment that has let me know I need to start traveling with the group. It did not cause me any physical harm, but it let me know why so many people were actually concerned about me traveling by myself. I've been going since 2007, making trips alone, um, and always getting taken in. I've never had any issues just trusting my intuition, but sometimes your intuition can lead you astray, or there they just can be other factors. And I can say, um, I think, Making sure that you have those connections on the ground with somebody, at least one person that either knows that you're coming or has given you a reference point to know somebody else that can receive you has always been um, something that I did not have, but that I have developed. So if I am to return, I have, I've already built that relationship. But for Ghana, um, I was never led to, uh, led to Ghana, but through finding very cheap flights, um, actually ended up going this time and going with a group. Um, I will say that there is such a heavy presence there and a network of those who have repatriated that will, wel that will welcome you and receive you. You're not going to have to worry about security. Ghana is very easy. It, I mean, I got malaria. I'm still here standing, so it's not a, you know, a thing. But, but as, far as, as far as security goes, I do keep a blade on me. Um, and I think that, that that's not because I'm, I'm fearful. It's just... I'm going by myself. Before I actually meet somebody in overseas, I've never had to have any issues. I think in the Congo, people walk around with money in their hands. Nobody's stealing from you. The, the community will kind of attack them if there's, if there's any um, issue with somebody doing something in the Can any of you speak to Tanzania, Kenya, um, Cote d'Ivoire? Morocco? I've been to a few of those places, but I mean, I think the sister gave the best advice. Have a connection when you're there. Wherever you go, have a connection that where, where you go. Because I mean, they'll, they'll be able to tell you, you know, yeah, don't go, here, don't go over there. in the bluff. This is our bluff, you know, area. Like, just don't stay there, but everywhere else you should be. And there's people, there's enough people in the room that have been to those places that can connect you with some place if you don't personally know. Thank you. Yeah, we're in a good place now uh, where we have this tons of information. Like for someone like myself, there's lots of videos of you know that subject Ghana. So when you're looking for a certain specific place, you're gonna find those things. You just have to make those uh, connections. But this is why I always um, recommend that uh, people do group travel. Uh, the way we have group travel set up is everything is organized. Uh, you have security. You have people on the lookout. You have many things that's structured to make sure that you're safe because it's a business operation where we can't have not even one incident uh, or people will just condemn you. So. Um, 
And then the good thing about when you travel with a group of people, a lot of times you're looking for people with similar mindset in your area and you end up just finding it on a trip uh, because you have, you know, we're so scattered and a lot of times it's one of those energies that really bring a lot of people together. So definitely recommend, uh, you know, group traveling, find small groups. Uh, they don't have to be as like what we have, but there's also this other groups and people who actually just promote travel. Definitely want to join those uh, travel clubs or groups on Facebook. Sure. This time, I, I learned my lesson. Oh, not this week, just in general. <laughs> in general. Um, okay, this is our question. Okay, um, I was just going to say that there are some things going on right now. Uh, the is happening to be the But um, there's, there's supposed to be something major going on tomorrow that I can't speak on. Like a clan rally? No, no, no. For the good. Yeah, but there, there are some things in the works. Um, uh, dealing with governance and economics, and particularly over here, but it's going to be affected. It's actually going to be happening worldwide. And we're going to probably in the next week or two or three see some major stuff, some major changes starting to happen. Brother will say, speak with you. Huh? I can't talk about it. Like oh, I know. Turn the camera off. <laughs> 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 but, you know, well, I don't go to the bike. No, no, but you already see it. No, we're not putting this on you. Um, but anyway, um, but I think in the next few days, um, you're going to be seeing some shifts. Well, from what I've known, the Indian devaluation of their money is a big major factor. They no longer are going to use $100 bill denominations, and they're giving the people a certain amount of time to turn their money in, to join banks and everything else like that. And if that's successful, the repercussions are said to possibly be headed this way. Well, hmm. one of the things is that uh, most of the countries are, if they have the ones that haven't already, are going to the gold standard. And that's coming. So that is what you're talking about. That's yeah. part of it. Yeah, that's it. part of it. Well, well, it's a secret. That, no, it's more to it than that. I think that that's one of the beautiful things about us coming together. I would love to. I think I think we'll get together. Not for something like that. No, that wasn't that wasn't the main part. There's something else going to happen. But that's just a piece. That's just a piece of it. And your name? My name is Karen. Sister Karen is available afterwards. I think that that's some of the, we should all be getting to know each other, um, period. That's the reason why we are here. Um, whether we decide to repatriate, regardless of the country, whether we decide to stay and build a nation within a nation or complement somebody else's work or hold growers responsible for making sure that the food that you're ingesting by trusting them is organic or whether that's holding the restaurants responsible that are actually serving you the food or whether that's making sure that you're intentional in supporting other businesses through Let's Buy Black 365 if you need to look across the globe regardless of where you're traveling that you're investing in it. I'd like to give you all um, a few moments to close out and then I have a few announcements to make and then we are going to take a little break um, and have um, somebody else come up here. Right? Uh, so I'm going to let you all close out. I have some comments and then we'll move to the next um, section. You want to start from here? Oh. <laughs> uh, like I was saying, I think the biggest thing is to go uh, and when it comes to safety, you know, there are a lot of ways to do it, like we were saying, going in a group. There are expats organizations generally for most countries. Um, but like I said, accept the consciousness that your creator gave you the whole world to have dominion over. You were designed to manifest and create and to bless every place and, and all over the world. We talk about taking systems from America to other countries, we're talking about taking it to another country with a modified definition. A modified definition of capitalism, 
it's more collective and more community as opposed to individual, which it is here. So we can take the same systems, but with a new definition. Stop living by Webster. We are creative, and as you redefine the definition of community, you redefine the definition of love, you redefine the definition of your values by what values truly are, which is the value of community, the value of family, and the value of a new definition of love. Once you get outside of the U.S., like she can tell you, it's a whole nother level of love out there that we are not even aware of. We think we know what love is. We think we know what friendship is. There is a bond once you leave the United States, whether it be Africa or anywhere, because the Africans have planted that seed in every country in the world if you get off of this plantation. That's right. Okay? All right. You just have to go. As for protection and safety, it's tough turf everywhere. <laughs> You know, it's going to be a tough neighborhood, it's going to be gangs, but your spiritual consciousness will lead you to protection. Just like a dog can smell fear, it's turf. We know turf, you know. Like I said, my place in Panama, I stay where the regular people stay. And people say, well, I want to rent your place. I say, you got to know how to walk the walk, brother. You know, <laughs> you have to walk in confidence and know who you are and where you're going, and that you're divinely blessed and protected by your creator in all that you do. You walk with that confidence, they won't sniff nothing but your power. So go visit, go to many countries, have a wonderful adventure because this is not a forever journey. Stop waiting. There is no retirement in life. There's only moving to a level where you know that you are going to do what you want to do. People working, to try to get to 65, 70 to retire. This is not a forever journey. You ain't guaranteed tomorrow. Right. If you want to bless somebody, you bless your children, your grandchildren, and you explore and open the world up to them. The little baby here, put some headphones on and have Spanish. Have another language going in their mind. You know, there's many ways to do it right here. We've talked about growing your own food, taking control of your nutrition and your health. Don't let this processed food, this high salt, give you every disease that keeps you right here. But once you get outside the plantation, the brother told you that you get another healing experience just from being on the soil. So you have to leave in order to go. If you never go, you never know. That's right. And when it's, if you don't have your passport and things in line, when it's time to go, you ain't going to be prepared. Because there will come a time when you're going to want to go, and if you ain't been nowhere, if you are not truly prepared, you may not be able to get off. So, I said, prepare yourself, be open and receptive, and enjoy your adventure. Thank you. Family, I'm Omani Tamba here. I just want to share a few closing out points uh, in um, the subject that I really deal with uh, is uh, preparation and doing business uh, in Africa or repatriation. Uh, a conscious ideology must be incorporated in the process of uh, doing business. Uh, we have to just be clear on what we're looking to make these uh, moves for and how we're looking to build on from the future. Focus on uh, working smarter and more for collective energy. Some of the advantages uh, that we have in doing business uh, in, in Ghana or other African uh, countries is rich cultural environment, unlimited amount of business opportunities in science, engineering, agriculture, and technology. A lot of the uh, fields where there's opportunities, those are the, the, a lot of the skills base that a lot of us went to university, uh, military, uh, hands-on training, technical schools, and so on, that, you know, so basically have the skills already. Right? Abundant of um, variety of natural resources, low cost of living and the starting of business, uh, great opportunities in building a cooperative business enterprise when you use all those methods and really just put it together as a community operation. 
And uh, what I want to share is a quote from uh, Kwame Nkrumah on the needs of Africa. And Kwame Nkrumah is one of the, the great African presidents that uh, really felt that it had really clarity on the direction that the African continent should move in. And, and unfortunately, um, those presidents like that are not, you know, not groomed anymore. Yeah. But he goes on to say, among immediate needs are the manufacturing in Africa of agriculture, machinery of all kinds, speed up in modernization of agriculture, we need supplies of electrical equipment for use in growing electric power production, essential for industrial growth, mining and industrial machinery, must be uh, produced in Africa to lower the cost of development or mineral resources. Construction, machinery and supplies, chemicals, fertilizer, plastics are all urgently required. And Africa must produce for our own requirements. So he's not only talking about uh, all of the things that you know, we know that we need, because this is like over um, almost 60 years ago he talked about these things. He also saying that we have to get into the fact of this mani being more manufacturing. So Kwame Nkrumah purposely uh, organized the country, Ghana, to where you have land based around the country designed for, for industrial development. So I'm also going on to say that it is you know, an ideal country where we need to make certain moves and put our strength together. That's one of them, uh, uh, especially if we don't want to just try to just keep on mapping out which of the 50 South African countries we need to make a move on. Right. It also goes on to say different regions in Africa suggest the production of iron and steel, non-ferrous metals, engineering supplies, chemicals, fertilizers, cement, and so on. So he's also saying that once you organize your continent, to where you can have different regions do certain things, you form, formulate that foundation to where you have a continent that can fit us and really accommodate the things that we need as a people. Um, we always talk about how scattered we are, so that's what I'm always talking about, the move to Africa to empower the continent. <laughs> Alright, so family, appreciate uh, everybody's energy, and if anyone have any questions or want to connect with me, I have these postcards that have all of my information, Facebook, YouTube, website, and I'm always available to talk and share any information as far as what I can do to contribute to our people here to make a difference. All right, once again, family, go on and tell them about it. Um, I'll say that uh, I'm going what I want to leave you all with is just invest in yourselves first. Um, there's a saying that uh, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Um, but also when um, community is ready, it will also appear. So um, invest in yourself, um, save $10 a week at the start, and save $20 a week, and then you'll start meeting other people that are willing to do the same thing. You don't even know what you're saving that money for. But when, when, it, when it's time for it to appear, it'll be there. Um, I have, um, I'll just leave you with two book suggestions to read if you haven't read them before. Um, one of them is The Richest Man in Babylon. Um, hopefully uh, some of y'all read that book. Um, if you haven't, please read that book. And then the other one is... is uh, uh, okay. I don't have a book on that. But that's a really good book. We talked about saving. And, uh, and then the other the other book that I would suggest, and there's a lot of books, but these are just two that I would suggest, um, is, is The Metu So if you haven't read The Metu uh, would you read that? Uh, What's his name again? Which one? Lamb. Metu Netter. Spell it for him. M E T U T U N E T E R. N T. One of y'all. I'll give it to you. I'll give it. Can you give it to him? No, go ahead. Spell it. It's right. M E D U N T R. T-E-R. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's true. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. You can do this. Um, well, I want to give thanks for you all sharing your wisdom okay. and spending the time here. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> There are so many.
many ways that you all can reinvest in yourselves. Uh, if you're not familiar with Hulu, Us Lifting Us, That's right. um, you all need to make sure that you're familiar with it. Baba Hakima, Mama Tamu, uh, many of us can uh, point you in the right direction, and you can just lift, look it up online. I was going to say lift us up online. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's Us Lifting Us. Um, and the other resources have been recorded. If you are looking to connect with these brothers, um, please do so after we have concluded. Um, we want to give thanks to the vendors. Give another shout out to Mama Tamu's Kitchen in the back. Everybody give thanks. The bread is free. If you want some bread, whatever bread is left, um, the bread on the table is free. Um, the assembly team is always in need of volunteers. And I want to make sure that there's another shout out to the silent auction table. If you haven't gone by, go by, please. Um, and get you some ACC uh, USD paraphernalia. All right? Okay, so we give thanks. You all can come off if you need to take a bathroom break, whatever it is, um, and mix and mingle. But at this time, we're going to bring up uh, Mama Taida for uh, voice and recommendations. I'm going to take a break. Thank you.